Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today we're going to learn Chapter 8, Section 1, which is about graphing the form of AX squared. Please have your journals open to page 247. A quadratic function is going to be nonlinear, okay, and it's going to be written in the form of f of x, which is a function, ax squared plus bx plus c. So it can be written in that form. Anytime you have x to the power of 2, you're going to have a quadratic function. So when you graph a quadratic function, it's going to take on the form of a parabola. And a parabola is either a u-shape or an upside-down u-shape on the graph. The vertex is either the highest or the lowest point, and the axis of symmetry is the line of reflection. For example, if we took a look at this graph here, the vertex is the highest or the lowest point. So on the graph on the left, the vertex would be down here. This is the vertex. On this graph here, the, the graph is going upside down this time, and so the vertex is the highest point, so this would be the vertex for this one. If we talk about the axis of symmetry for both of these graphs, it's the line that goes in the middle and it always crosses through the vertex. So here's the axis of symmetry for the left one, and here is the axis of symmetry for the right one. I usually simplify uh, the words axis of symmetry by just writing AOS, so you will see that a lot in my notes for the future. At the bottom of this page, I just want to go over something with you, and that is the parent function of x squared. So this is the basic function that you're going to be comparing all of your functions to. And so I just wanted to go over this with you really quickly before we move on to the next set of problems. So if you were to plug in x squared, or all of these numbers for x into x squared, here's what it would be. We would have uh, negative 3 squared, so that's positive 9. Then you have negative 2 squared, so that's positive 4. Negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. 0 squared is 0. And then 1 squared, you'll notice that it ends up repeating, right? 2 squared is 4, and then 3 squared is 9. So you'll notice that we end up getting this nice symmetric pattern. We have 9s, and then we have 4, and then we have 1, and then we have 0. So this right here is our vertex. So 0, 0 is the point that it, that it turns around and goes back the other way. And then we can go ahead and graph the other points. And so when you graph that, you end up with this beautiful U-shape here. Um, you'll notice that the axis of symmetry is the Y-axis. You'll notice that the vertex is at the origin. So this is the very most basic of the parabola graphs, and it's just plain old X squared. So everything else that we do is going to be uh, compared to that X squared. So a lot of your questions will ask you, uh, how does this compare to x squared? And you'll see that on the next set of questions. On the next page, they first want us just to identify some characteristics of the graphs. So if I take a look at number one, these are the four things that I would like for you to find. The vertex is the point, in this case, it's the lowest point on the graph. It's the part, the, the, part, the, uh, the time that, that it changes direction. So in this case, the vertex is negative 1, comma 1. The vertex is always listed as a point because that's what it is on the graph. The axis of symmetry is the line that goes through the vertex, and you'll notice that it is symmetrical on this side and this side. So it is a line of, it's like a mirror line, okay? So in this case, the axis of symmetry is a line, and that line is x equals negative 1. If we take a look at the domain, the domain is all of the x values. Now, since there are arrows pointing here, we know that this graph will continue going on forever and ever and ever. So that means that our domain, in this case, is all real numbers. Our range are all of the y values that are being used. 
and our range, we're starting at positive 1 and we're heading up. So we would say that our range is y greater than or equal to positive 1. I would like for you to please find the vertex, axis of symmetry, domain, and range for problem number 2. Please pause the video and check your answers. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. In the next set of problems, we need to graph the function and also compare it to the graph of f of x equals x squared. So when we're trying to figure out some points, what the good, a good place to start is by making a t-chart. And this is what we're going to be plugging it into. We're going to be plugging it into 5x squared. So if we plug in negative 3, it's going to be 5 times negative 3 squared, which is 5 times 9, and that's going to be 45. Remember, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And then when we plug it into positive 3, notice we're also going to get 45, right? So those two are the same. Now when we plug in negative 2, 5 times negative 2 squared is 5 times 4, which is 20. And notice it's going to be the same when we plug it in down for the 2. So 2 positive 2 squared will also give us 20. When we plug in negative 1, so 5 times negative 1 squared is going to give us 5. And notice we'll get the same answer when we plug in 1. And 0 would be 5 times 0 squared, which would be 0. So you'll notice this nice symmetry thing that happens. When we plug in a negative 3, we get the same thing as a positive 3. Negative 2 is the same thing as a positive 2. Negative 1 is the same thing as a 1. And that means that 0, this is going to be our vertex. This is the lowest point here. Now, it doesn't always work out that way. It does in this case because there's nothing else added or subtracted or anything else besides just the x squared. So we know that this is going to be all positive numbers uh, in our y's. So I'm going to put my x-axis all the way at the bottom here, and I'm going to put my y-axis right in the middle. I also went ahead and put my, point, my numbers here. I noticed that I'm getting all the way, I want to get all the way up to 45. So I went ahead and counted by fives. I'm not going to bother putting the numbers on the x-axis because I'm just going to stay as counting by ones. So now it's time to graph these points. So we have negative 3, 45, negative 2, 20, negative 1, 5, and then we have 0, 0. And then notice that we um, copy that on the other side. So that means that this, and we want to just connect these points in a nice U shape. Okay, you never want to come down to a V because this is not a V, it's actually a U. Um, I notice that my vertex is here and my y-intercept is, is my axis of symmetry, right? So if we were to take a look at x squared, um, x squared is going to be much wider than this. So we're going to have 0, 0, and then 1, 1 would be like here, and then it would be 2, 4, which would be here. And then 3 times 3 is 9, so it would come up to about here. So you'll notice that the shape is of um, our normal x squared is going to be much wider. This is a very narrow uh, shape, right? It, it makes it much narrower. And so the reason why it's narrow is because we have a multiple of 5 here. So what we're going to say is that this is a vertical stretch by a factor of five. All right, let's take a look at number four. This time I'm plugging it into uh, negative four x squared. So this is gonna be negative four times negative three squared, which is negative four times nine, which is negative 36. And if we plug it in a positive three, we're also gonna get the same answer, negative 36. If I plug in a two, we'll have negative 4 multiplied by 2, negative 2 squared, which is 4. So that'll be negative 16. And this turns out to be negative 16 as well. Plugging in a negative 1, we have negative 4 times 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So that's equal to negative 4. And I'm going to get a negative 4 here as well. And we plug in a 0. Negative 4 times 0 squared is 0. So that'll be 0. 
So once again, we have a little bit of symmetry happening between these numbers here. And we would expect that because there's nothing adding and subtracting onto this. It's just negative 4x squared. So this time my graph is below the x-axis because all of my y numbers are negative. So this time I'm going to put my x-axis at the top. And I'm still going to put my y-axis in the middle. Um, once again, I counted by something other than ones on my y-axis because my numbers got a little bit big. OK, let's go ahead and graph these. We have negative 3 comma negative 36. So that's going to be there. Now we have negative 2 comma 16, negative 1, negative 4, 0, 0. And you'll notice what happens is we end up having this mirrored on the other side of the axis of symmetry. That's why you have an axis of symmetry, right? In this case, our axis of symmetry, once again, is the y-axis. So don't forget to draw a nice U-shape that connects all of our points. And there we have it. Okay, so now all that's left is that we need to compare it to the, uh, the parent function of just plain old x squared. So first of all, I noticed that it has a minus in front of it. So that means we're going to have a reflection over the x-axis. And we also have a multiple of 4 here. So that means it's also going to be a stretch again. Uh, it'll be a stretch by a factor of 4. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 5. When I plug in a negative 3, so the, it's, we have a negative x squared. So when we plug in a negative 3, we have that negative that's still out front here, and then we're plugging in a negative 3. So notice that all I'm doing is I'm putting the parentheses around what I'm plugging in, but this negative here that's still there, it stays out front. So this negative stays, but negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 9. So this turns into negative 9 because of that negative that's still out there. I would like for you to go ahead and finish number five on your own. Uh, let me go ahead and help you really quick. You're going to want to put your x-axis up at the top, and your y-axis will want to go right in the middle. And you don't need to count by anything. You can just leave the numbers as they are for this question. So go ahead and finish number five on your own, please. All right, go ahead and check your answer. Um, I want you to notice that there is a negative out front here, and so that means we're going to have a reflection in the x-axis from that original um, parent function of just plain old x squared. I would like for you to please pause the video and try number six on your own. All right, please pause the video and check your work. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. You'll notice that given how I counted here, I did not have room for my, uh, my third points here. So 3 comma negative 63 and negative 3 comma negative 63. And that's okay. I just didn't have room for that. Also notice what happened to my graph. We had a, uh, the negative means that we have a reflection in the x-axis. And the 7 means that we have a vertical stretch of 7. All right, I'm going to skip to number eight really quick. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our numbers here. I'm going to start with my pot, with my zero. So I, if I plug in zero, it's going to be 0 0.6 multiplied by zero squared. So that's zero. Then we have 0 0.6 multiplied by one squared, which is one. So that's 0 0.6. 0 0.6 multiplied by two squared, which is four. So six times four is 24. So this would be 2.4 because we've got to move the decimal. 0 0.6 multiplied by 3 squared, which is 9. So 6 times 9 is 54. So that means this would be 5.4. And we're going to repeat them on the other side. So if we multiply negative 3 times negative 3, we still get positive 9. And so the same answer for here is going to be up at the negative 3. So this will be 5.4. This will be 2.4. And this will be 0 0.6. All right, so my x-axis is at the, at the bottom. My y-axis is here in the middle. And I don't need to count by anything different because my numbers aren't as big. All right, so negative 3, 5.4 is here. Negative 2, comma 2.4 is here. Negative 1, comma 0 0.6, 0, 0, 0.0. And then you'll notice that it repeats on the other side. 
All right, so if we were to compare this to our graph of x squared, we would start at 0, 0, and then 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, and so you'll know, and then 3 times 3 is 9. So you'll notice what's happening here is that the graph is um, much wider. It's not narrow this time. And the reason why it ends up being a bit wider is because we're multiplying by a number that's between 0 and 1. So then my answer as to how it's compared is that it is uh, wider. It's a vertical shrink this time of 0 0.6. All right, let's take a look at number seven. Um, I already started it for you. Uh, when you plug in positive five, you get negative five. So that would be point here. And then without writing it down, I know that the negative five, when I plug it in, will be in the same spot, right? Because this is going to be my axis of symmetry. So I'd like for you to finish this problem, please. All right, so here we have the final answer. Um, you'll notice that we have a negative out front, so it's a reflection in the x-axis, and we're multiplying by one-fifth, so it's a vertical shrink of one-fifth. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.